On Pink Plum Knits. My name is Anna and I am a maker based in Melbourne, Australia on the traditional lands of the Bunwaran people of the Kulin Nation. This is a place where I like to share my making and today I thought I would just jump on and share some of my recently finished knits. Um, I generally do share knitting here, sometimes crochet, sometimes some other crafts that I might um, have dabbled in. Um, so I have got quite a few finished objects sitting on the floor around me. I think I will just get straight into what I am wearing, which is a recently finished object, something I finished a couple of months ago. This is the Jenny sweater, which is a pattern from Ulan Sush. I completed this as a test knit and it is like the perfect sweatshirty sort of shaped um, sweater. So I'll stand up so you can have a little bit more of a look. It has got um, very simple construction but amazing, amazing details along the way and these huge oversized drop shoulder sleeves which I really, really love. I'll start with the yarn. So I knit this in the recommended yarn, which is from Bish e Bush. It's their Le Gros Lambswool, which is a worsted aram weight woolen spun yarn. Um, it does feel a little bit dry in your hands, but it softens up amazingly and blooms like a woolen spun yarn does um, once it's been washed and blocked. Um, I knit mine in the colour light grey beige. I've got the swatch here so you might be able to see the variation colour a little bit better than I can on my body. Maybe on the sleeve detail here. It is, it is a light grey but there are also these sort of flecks which you can't really see. Maybe better here. These flecks of yellow, musty sort of colour, tiny bit of blue coming through, which I really, really love. It gives a little bit more interest to the garment. So as I mentioned, it is oversized. Um, I knit a size two, which gave me 11 inches or about 30 centimetres of positive ease around the bust, which you can see here there's heaps and heaps of room but really contributes to it feeling like a huge sweatshirt which I really love but a little bit more sophisticated. Um, it has a drop sleeve and a saddle shoulder construction which means it has these really really wonderful lines here on the shoulder at the front and also at the back you can see really nice shoulder detail there. Um, ribbed neckline ribbed hem at the bottom, crew neck, not too high. I'm not too fond of a too high neck. This is just perfect. Um, the only modification that I made when I knit mine was to add a little bit of extra length to the sleeve, which is something I do quite often as I find I like the sleeve to come down here and my arms must be a little bit longer than what most designers knit for. Um, which is fun. But yeah, um, really, really lovely. I have been wearing this um, with pants as I'm doing today, but also because it is slightly cropped um, with a high-waisted skirt tucked in a little bit um, over a dress. I really, really love it. And I think as the weather is cooling down here, I will wear it more and more. I am just wearing it with a t-shirt underneath and I don't find the yarn to be scratchy. Um, it has, as, as I said, softened up really, really nicely after being washed. So really recommend this pattern. I just love this. This drop shoulder shape, the silhouette of it. Stand up again so you can see. Oh, my really creaky chair. I really love that. I think it looks great. Very pleased with this. This is not my only finished object uh, sweater. I have a cardigan. And then I have a children's item and I have a scarf to share with you. Um, I actually wrote the notes for this episode over a month ago and these were, except for the one I'm wearing, were all whips at the time. Um, so it's really nice to be able to come, even though I'm a bit, bit later than I wanted to, to podcast, but to be able to share them with you as finished objects. 
So the next thing I'm going to share with you is a cardigan that I have shared in previous episodes. And that is the Esopo cardigan from Sari Nordland. So this is in her book that she has um, came out uh, towards the end of last year, um, Softly Timeless Knits. And it was really delightful to knit and I have worn it quite a bit. I'm just pulling a little bit of hair and fluff from other things off it as I'm talking to you. Um, so this, I'll try and hold it up so you can see, it's really, really hard to show. I might pop in some photos because I think it's getting a bit blown out with the light um, and it being black, but it is an open front cardigan, knit in a worsted weight yarn, um, with sort of a semi shawl collar and then a lovely cable detail on the sleeve. In the pattern, there are options to knit um, a longer version and a cropped version. And I went for the cropped version and I used one of the recommended yarns just because I had it in stash, um, which was Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, which is worsted weight, wool and spun, quite a light yarn. Uh, some people do mention they find it quite delicate to work with or wear with, wear. I haven't noticed that in the past and I've knit quite a few garments with it and worn them quite a bit um, but I have been wearing this one quite a bit so it'll be interesting to see if I notice anything different with this one but I found it to wear quite well in the past um, so yes so I knit mine in the color let's have a look uh, cast iron which is quite a black color but as you can see it's picking up on the camera there there are quite a lot of flecks of white and gray through the yarn. Um, so you start off with, um, pick, start off with the back shawl collar, which is in a rib and work part of the back, then start working the front and continue to complete the body. You can see there is a rib detail with some nice increases along the shawl collar. And once you've done that, you come and you work the two sleeves, which have a cable pattern on it which um, might look complicated, but I actually found quite easy. And I just used some markers to try and keep up where I was. And I did not need to have the pattern with me as I was going. So you can see it's got just two different styles of cables and you're repeating it a couple of times along the sleeve. Even though I have knit this in a black yarn, I think the cables still pop really quite nicely um, in the design and are a really nice feature. I um, did not read the pattern completely and I did not do all the decreases as you were supposed to as you went along the sleeve. Um, and I kind of got probably halfway down the sleeve and realized, hang on, I haven't been decreasing. Um, so I calculated my own decrease rate to make sure that I ended up with the recommended number of stitches for the, um, for the cuff at the end. I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I went for the size three in this um, cardigan because I wanted it a little bit more oversized. I do normally knit uh, size two in Sari Nordland's um, patterns and going up to the size three gave me 13 inches of ease, which is quite, quite a lot, I would think. I mainly wanted it across the body so that I could easily put it over a blousey sort of top and I could kind of wrap up in a little bit. And I definitely have achieved it, that um, with it, but I have found that maybe the arms are perhaps a little bit looser than I would want, particularly down in the cuff here. I'm finding it's quite loose and I'm getting a bit of air, air down through the cuff. And given the lightweight nature of the yarn, even though it is wool and spun and worsted, I'm wondering as the weather cools, if I might go back and knit them maybe a smaller needle or if I do a, a rapid decrease row before I get to the cuff um, to sort of cinch it in a little bit. If anyone else has found that, that they've had a garment which um, around the cuff is a little bit loose than like and you've gone with one of those approaches or something completely different, please let me know because I'd be really keen to understand, um, to understand what other people have done um, with the sleeves like that. Um, so yes, another success and something I've already been wearing quite a bit. So really loving that. Um, the next finished object, oh, I see I have one that I did not mention at the start. And 
I think I should almost say that this is a vintage finished object. I'm just going to pick it up from the bottom of the pile, just one sec. So the next finished object that I have to share with you is a bag. It is a bag that I started in 2011. I believe it was a pattern from a Debbie Bless magazine and I knit the two pieces of the bag and put it aside. I did not seam it, I uh, did not add the handles, I did nothing for a very, very, very long time. Uh, I moved it two houses, three houses with us, uh, did not put it together. And I just thought the other day, it's about time I put it together. Um, I, I had saved a little bit of the yarn um, to seam it up and I started using that to do that. So it was knit in um, Debbie Bliss Como. I'm not sure if that yarn is around anymore. It's a bulky way wool cashmere, um, kind of like, I would assume it's like almost like a single ply. You can see it's, it's quite a thick yarn. I did find it broke quite a bit whilst I was seaming, but yeah, half hour of work took me over a decade to do. It's quite cute. I haven't put a lining in it yet. I wanted to see how stable it was with the seams here, here and here um, before I added the lining and to see what I would use it for. I've just been using it to store balls of yarn at the moment and it seems fine for that. But I think if I'm gonna start using it for something else, it is going to stretch quite a bit because the yarn does have quite a lot of give in it. Not a huge maker of accessories. This is quite cute, quite bright. Um, not sure it'll be another 10 years before I make something else like this. We'll see. But yes, one of those whips that just languished for a super, super long time. I do have another whip that is probably as old as this. That's a shawl. I have put it back on my needles. Um, I haven't really worked on it very much, so I'm going to save that one for another day. But yeah, a very, very old whip that is now finished, which is great. Um, I didn't follow any particular instructions for seaming it up. I sort of did like a mattress stitch for that. And then um, to put the handles on, I just merely folded the fabric over the handles, um, which is sort of like... I just laid the handle down, folded the fabric over and just stitched along here on both sides. And it seems quite stable. Um, it is a lot of fabric bunched up. It would easily go the full way around the handles uh, if it wasn't condensed down the bottom there. So yes, another uh, finished object, not one that sat around for so long, is a shawl. So at the end of last year, when everyone was opening up all their advents, I hadn't ordered one. I was feeling a little bit like I was missing out. But then I had quite a few advents from past years that I hadn't used. So I pulled out one of my favourites, which was a Union Fibre advent. Um, Bonnie from Union Fibre is Canadian but based in New Zealand and she dyes up the most beautiful colours moody, um, fat, they're beautiful fades when she does them. I'm a huge fan. I find it very, very hard to resist a shop update when she does one. Um, and I think that's part of the reason why I'd held on to the advent is it was just like perfect colors. And I was waiting for the perfect project. But at the end, I just thought it's no use just sitting in the cupboard. I'm gonna pull it out. And I um, started the Wonderland shawl, which is a pattern from Black Cat Knitting, who I believe is also located in New Zealand. So it was a bit of a, a big project um, to get through, but very, very enjoyable. Did not take a huge amount of concentration and was quite addicted to see the colors fold, um, unfold as they faded through the pattern. Um, the pattern is written for DK weight yarn and the advent that I had was fingering weight. So I held the yarn a double and that generally worked pretty well um, as I went through. There were a few times 
where I had to change um, when I was alternating colors for the fade just because I did not have the right amount of yarn um, but that may have just also been um, user error so I will show you um, the, the fade that this creates so it starts down here at the tip and you're making a huge shawl scarf like shape and fading through the colors I might see if I can close that blind a little bit more because I think the colors are flowing out. Just one sec. Okay, let's see if that's a little better. It feels very dark in here, but I'm hoping the colors are better on the screen for you. So this is the 2021 advent that Bonnie from Union Fiber put out. It's on a superwash fingering weight base. And as I said, I held it double. I knit this on five millimeter needles. Um, so you start down here in the tip and you slowly work through some patterns um, increasing as you go um, and moving through the different textures adding in the more colors and you end up um, in the midpoint about here so it's not a super uh, wide shawl but it's incredibly long and then you decrease and work through the reverse order of, of texture patterns. Actually, I've just realized I have showed it to you backwards. I started down here with the light gray, which was the first color, and then worked up to the green, which was the 20, the last color before the full scheme, which I didn't use. And it is, I can't get it all on screen at once. It's a great, huge scarf, shawl, with a wonderful fade and it wraps up really beautifully. I've worn it a couple times, but mainly just as a, like a scarf, just by wrapping it around a few times and then just tying it and moving it around a little bit. So you get a little bit more of the colors um, that you can see in the shawl and greens over there. It's very squishy. I love the colors uh, it was, and it was a heap, heap of fun to knit um, and the pattern what was very easy to follow as I said before I did find because I was holding it double and possibly due to not paying a huge amount of attention all the way through I did have to sometimes start fading a color a little bit earlier than what the pattern suggested just because I was worried about running out of yarn um, as I went but it seemed to work out just fine I'm really really happy with the result I do have a little box of leftovers here I'm not quite sure what to do with them um, it's not a sock yarn it's 100% wool yarn in a fingering weight they are just the best colors but if you've got a suggestion for what I should do with this lovely little collection let me know some of the amounts are really teeny, teeny, tiny. And for some of them, like the last color, I've got quite a bit still left. I'm wondering if I just keep it until I have more um, leftovers from Union Fiber and I'll make some sort of scrappy, mild um, shawl, but I'm not quite sure which one. But if you've got something in the meantime that you think I could do with it, please let me know. Um, Cause they're too pretty to let go to waste. So that was a very fun project. The next one was a knit for my daughter. Every year I try and knit both of my children one sweater each and if they need a pair of socks to wear in the house. And it had been a little bit over a year. Last year I, I didn't knit them either, each of them a sweater because I knit at the big end of the previous year because we went overseas for a colder climate during our summer. So they were all set for knits last year. They both requested the same style of sweater that I did before in a very similar yarn. Um, my kids, like low kids, do not like anything scratchy um, and they're very, very particular about the yarn and how it feels and their idea of scratchy is very different to my idea of scratchy. Um, they like normally a superwash yarn because it's very smooth. They don't like any mohair or alpaca or anything else. 
um, in it. So it took a little bit of time to find something that I wanted to knit <laughs> and something that they wanted to wear. Um, so we used the same pattern as we used last time, which was the Monday sweater, which is a basic raglan sweater from Petite Knit. Um, and they both really loved that the year before, the, the time before when I made that. Um, it has a decent amount of positive ease for a children's sweater in it. It has crow neck. I find it a very sort of meditative knit because once you've done the collar, you then fold the collar over to make a, a double folded collar and then work um, the increases I find are quite easy to work through and it's just simple stockinette stitch so it's sort of my TV watching um, project or project when um, there are a lot of people around I want to knit something but don't want to concentrate too much so I find I do get through them reasonably quickly um, but my children are growing and their sizes are getting bigger and bigger. So this year I made a size 12 for my daughter in the Monday sweater. And she chose a yarn that I had in stash that was from Big Bendigo Woolen Mills. So if you're not in Australia, you might not be familiar with Bendigo Woolen Mills. They are a mill that's based in Bendigo, which is a regional town um, in Victoria. The mill is one of the oldest in Australia. Most of the production, I believe, is still done in Australia. Um, they tend to make yarn for a lot of other commercial companies, but you can buy direct from them. It used to be via mail order. They would send you out a couple times a year their shade cards. You would write down what shades you wanted and mail it back to them, and then you'd get your yarn. But now it is obviously all online. They have a range of just like really basic coloured yarns um, that are machine washable, but then every now and then they do a, um, a different sort of blend of yarn or colour range. And um, all their yarn is sold in uh, very large 200 gram balls, which makes it really economical um, if you're making blankets or um, yeah, just for, for, for simple patterns. I find their yarn really, really good. So this is what my daughter's sweater looks like. So as I said, you start off with the neckband, you do a folded collar, um, the pattern takes you through some lovely um, increases, you split the sleeves, and then finish with a ribbing down the bottom. Uh, as I said, I, I quite enjoy making a knit like this, even though I sometimes do not like having to make things on demand. Um, the blend that I used for this was one of the ones that they don't have anymore. It was from last year, I think, or the year before. It is called Alpine. It is 60% wool, 20% alpaca, 5% silk, and 15% nips. And it's a DK weight, um, eight ply yarn. I think it's their yarns are normally 400 meters to the 200 gram ball. Um, so while the pattern does suggest that you could do a mohair and a fingering um, together, I just went straight for the DK and it has most of those already blended in. Um, doing the alpaca was sort of testing the uh, softness with the silk and the nets and everything. Um, some days she said I can't wear it, um, but I think she's come around to it and we've washed it a couple of times, which has been good. So it's blowing out a little bit, but it is a pale blue. You can see the nets there. It does have a little bit of sheen from the, the silk in it. But overall, um, she was very pleased with it. I was happy with how the yarn has come up. And my son has requested the same, but in a dark blue, um, one that I have in stash, which is just to the side. I'm just gonna grab it, I can, so I can show you. So he's requested this one, which is called Fairy Wren. Um, you can see in the ball. So yeah, it's a very large ball of yarn. It does have a little bit of a halo, you can see there, which must be from the mohair. Oh, it's not the mohair, it must be from the alpaca. So yes, his is to be started any day because winter is fast approaching, yeah. So that's something that will be on my needles soon. I do have quite a few projects on the needles at the moment. I've just started a new test knit for Alain Souche and I've got a couple shawls that I am knitting. 
after doing the Wonderland shawl, I really loved the idea of fading and pulled out all that fingering yarn that I've been keeping for many, many years, but not quite sure what to do with and sort of put a few other fades together and, and slowly working through some of that. I also have a crochet blanket and a lento sweater, a couple of other things. So I will pop back here hopefully soon and share what I'm currently working on. But um, in the meantime, thank you so very much for joining me. I love to read your comments, so please let me know if you had any feedback on any of the knit sessions, some of the questions that I had. I'd love to hear what you're knitting. Um, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, what summer, if you're knitting summery things, what sort of, what projects are they? If you're in the Southern Hemisphere like me, what woolly items do you have on your needles at the moment? Um, I will be back soon. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>